clap along if you feel like you're gonna watch videos with me. Oh my god, tell oh, me no one. that song back in the movie. We just got over that song. Tell me the minions didn't bring it back. No, they didn't. Uh, oh. No, there was no Pharrell. Oh, but yes, I can. There. But I can. Actually. Yeah. What? Like, I will For anyone who watched this, please, please take this video and turn that into a There can be only one. They're here. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Go ahead. Make my day. Cinema Royale. Hello, welcome to Cinema Royale. This is me, Mike Mixtape. I want to introduce you to my awesome film officiados and our special guests, but let's get on with the first one. We have our goggled friend over here, Matt Brunet, also known as Adam Hello! Matt. Me watch everyone! You know, you could have gone with the Mad Max thing. I feel like this all would have gone a lot I better. I have seen Mad Max, actually, so... Ah! Ah! <laughs> Well, What's so a happy note to begin on? One of us has not well, yet has been enlightened. Don't worry. I haven't seen it either. Neither so. does Minions! Hey I, hey, I have an excuse for not watching Mad Max. I was too busy watching <laughs> Minions. It's good <laughs> enough. Matt, I'll kick your ass. <laughs> Actually, can Go you see that Mad time? Max and wipe Banana? Minions from your mind. Banana? <laughs> I'll kick your ass, Matt. For realsies next. and everything. Yeah, please go do it for oh, me. <laughs> ne <laughs> right next to Matt Bernay is Morgan Ledger. And not to start with the evening too much, I did see Mad Max Free Road and it kicked ass. There we go. Indeed. There we go. It did. It was I wasn't it, it, it. I did. I love Mad Max Free Road, that's, by the way. That's too. a good I movie. It. I believe. It's a very good I movie. finally believe. I finally believe Nick Holt, Nicholas Holt can be a good actor, and then he signs up for a shitty movie like Underdogs. Ah, damn it! Look, man. We all gotta pay the bills. Peter Dinklage was an yes. underdog. Gonna hold that against him? Yeah. No, nobody is. No, you don't understand. It's a. It's you don't, a. You don't it's know a the crappy comments. CGI it's... foosball movie. Mm -hmm. Oh no, that, the town's gonna get was torn down! Save me, little foosball friends! That could have been charming, like in Argentina, like where it came from, but because the Weinstein had to pick it up, they gotta find a way to poop all over it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look, the point is... And the, man the point is, Matt still needs to see Mad Max. That is what we're focusing on. Let's not forget that. <laughs> Let's do a campaign, everybody. After everybody in the comments below saying, Matt. No, nah, I'm just kidding. I only saw it once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my say, God, yeah, Matt. I'll sign that petition. <laughs> yeah, let's do a campaign. Matt has to see Mad Max Fury Road. Comment below. Say, Matt, Matt, watch Mad Max Fury Road. The headline petition on changes.com. Adam Matt must watch Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> you must see the awesome that is... Uh, what's his name? Something Joe? Immortan. Immortan. Thank you, Immortan, Immortan, Immortan. Immortan. Immortan Joe is amazing. Is, is he that amazing? Because he's the main bad guy. And he's kind of a dick. Let's be real here. But let's talk about the real star. Um, air guitarist hung by wires with a giant flamethrower guitar. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep <laughs> that would that's be the, the main character of the film. film. I wish. Pretty cool. <laughs> oh, I... Make him a whole film about that and do like a prequel and see how his origins I'm shocked became. that he isn't the poster. Like, if I were making the movie, he would be the poster. I would, like, I would get that poster so bad it just hanging on the wall. Uh, the man in the middle is James Sullivan, also known as I Me Dude. <laughs> Tonight's ah! broadcast is brought to you by me. PewDiePie, the guy that makes seven billion dollars on YouTube for doing things that anybody can do. But James, guess what? It was terrifying. Did but you do something what? with your hair? Because it looks terrifying. Why are but you guess what I'm here for? 
Oh, I'm guys, here to tell you that as of today, everything you know is wrong. John Connor is a Terminator. And oh, oh, Finch is a racist. And guys, Santa Claus beats his reindeer. His reindeer. But here is the worst of all. You need to shut the, the fuck absolute, absolute. up. Guys, <laughs> isn't that adorable? Tommy from Where the Dead Go to Die is Stop all grown up now. Stop moving your head. Close your mouth. You're not even talking. I am talking now, biatch. <laughs> but Where's here's Tommy? the best part of all. We know the one thing that can be true is... Alright. Oh, Triple oh. income will make you smile. <laughs> Triple income with glass of wine. Triple income will help you, mister, to punch bad breath right in the kisser. Triple income! Traumatized Canadian girl known as Jada Jada. Oh Jada. god. I, I think I have a psyche now. I think I need to see a therapist. <laughs> Probably gonna end up killing a man tonight. So <laughs> it's all because I'll of touch James. Blame him. Well, so long yeah. as it's Jimmy Screamer Claws, I'm okay. <sighs> Actually, don't be. Don't hey, be he's a, hey, hey, hey. Oh. Hey, he's a nice guy, James. Don't, don't kill him. Yeah. I actually am curious about his new movie. This is Devin Cook. She's actually a fan slash friend of ours, fan of this podcast, and she's also a co-host on my other podcast. He's a fan of podcast. Devin Cook, everybody. Wee. Um, so <laughs> I am here. What are your other two wishes? <laughs> thank you for being here. And I think and my wish is going to be, don't ever do that again, James. Never, ever, ever, ever. This, I swear, oh, this might be. Oh wait, wait! Shh. Oh, he's alive! He's come back. Morgan, why do you go where we can't follow? Because <laughs> I fall down. <laughs> you fell again, Morgan. <laughs> yeah. I was making a Are you? I was making an escape, and I hit against the chair on my side, uh, and I just. Oh, oh, oh! I'm oh. oh. concerned. I was like, "What's going yeah. on? Where did oh, you find that?" I lost him. Uh, I'll be, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Besides, this is, this is not the first time we were recording like the Terminator 2 commentary, and I was reaching for my um, cord, and I literally fell off the bed. So you were lying there. This yeah, I, I had a hard time getting up, and I heard two phone calls, and I thought they were from uh, debit collectors. Because I've been getting a lot of calls from debit collectors, apparently. At midnight, anything is possible. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm totally sorry for that. Man. I just I Okay, 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 we get the point, okay. So we're, so we are all here, which is the first time we've ever been all together for a franchise episode. We've done four of them already. This is the fourth one. 
Uh, this time we're talking about the Terminator franchise since Terminator Genesis, the fifth film in the franchise, was released no, this month. Genesis. Mm. Genesis. Genesis. Mike. I thought it was Cease. Pronounce Cease. it right. It's Genesis. Okay. Genesis. Cease. Genesis. 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 Uh, we'll talk. We'll we'll discuss that towards the end of the podcast, but. Uh, if you have not been paying attention to the channel, we've done commentaries on all four films, so if you want to hear trivia facts about the film and our plus our thoughts as we are watching the films, go check them out on my channel right now. Uh, so, basically, The Terminator is, uh, is a science fiction set of films featuring Arnold Schwarzenegger, of course. Um... The first film came out in 1984. James Cameron directed it. It was his big magnum opus because he only directed a film previously, which was Piranha 2 The Spawning, but you would know this because you would hear the ter Terminator commentary, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, getting to the point, um, The Terminator is a film about a time-traveling uh, Terminator going back into time to kill the mother of a future resistant leader and it's like a science fiction slash horror flick, and John Connor in the future, uh, Sarah Connor's son, sends Kyle Reese to protect Sarah Connor. It becomes this, like this massive, you know, protect action science fiction horror film. Uh, how is the first film of the Terminator? Well, what are everybody's thoughts? It is Glorious. known to be good. Generally. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I thought it was entertaining. It's awesome. I like it too, though. I remember, though I learned the hard way. Um, don't watch it as a commentary first, because I was confused as hell by the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah, so, of course, her first time viewing the film, uh, she actually watched it with our commentary, and it wasn't very good, because she missed a couple of key plot points that she was confused towards the I end. Never do that, Devin. Never watch a movie with a commentary any commentary first uh, <laughs> that's why i keep that's that's the, that was my key line in every commentary you watch the film first then come back to yeah, the commentary you have a knowledge <laughs> just hey, saying uh, the, hey in the next uh, couple commentaries i was on i actually did watch the film beforehand so I yeah for the rest of them she learned her lesson she watched it beforehand then it came back to discuss it I remember with us when i watched the first terminator uh, movie i was really invested in like the the relationship between Sarah Connor and Mr. Reese and then I was like so sad when he died because I was sappy at that age spoiler alert yes oh psh push off oh psh oh psh spoiler alert for the 10 people you... in the world who haven't seen this movie <sighs> mm -hmm. I would have been one of those 10 or people or doesn't even know the movie I just can't believe Obi-Wan Kenobi dies you guys I mean <laughs> so loud people might hear you Hey, hey, did you know that Soylent Green is made of people? Oh, no. Yeah, I out. do, Morgan. And while we're at it, the cake is a lie, right? <laughs> Hold on, I just saw on Twitter. Holy crap. You would not believe who killed Dumbledore. Me! Wait, Me! wait, I don't... <laughs> and it's not Voldemort. <gasps> it's Snape! That fucker! Who would have thought he turned out to be evil? And what do you know? Bowser just Instagrammed a picture of the princess in another castle. <laughs> another castle? Well, we spent all this time getting to this castle! Like a whole level! That's some bullshit! Sorry, you gotta go to the other one. And apparently, you want me to do. and apparently Dorothy had the power to go home all along. Through a cell phone in the back heel of a ruby slipper. Well, that good witch was clearly holding out on us, the shithead. She wouldn't have believed me. This is supposed to be 1939, but no. They couldn't let us do the jitterbug. All she had to do was click her heels to dig together, and suddenly she had hungry, hungry nipples. <laughs> what? Where's that come from? J James said I only know that reference is an inside joke if you have- Oh, you guys go suck yeah. something. I know this reference too. 
Okay, let's get back to the movie, Terminator. Terminator. Oh, talking about yes. Terminator. Terminator. Okay, we got the Terminator. What? It actually Terminator? does bring up uh, two interesting factors and combine them into one. Number one is pretty much a post-apocalyptic world, and number two is uh, time travel. So basically combining these two elements about knowing how far that, um, like what one opposing team would do against the other and pretty much just go back in time and kill the mother of the leader back then so they would at least have a much easier chance to survive or like to at least win the war and conquer the world. Not to mention that it, it ended up resulting in like one of the big central examples of the evil robot trope in media. Like when you talk about evil robots, Terminator's like one of the first examples that comes up. I wonder why that is. Because it's not like it was a new concept at the time. Well, this is the one, I, mm -hmm. I guess this is the one that actually makes it kind of, like, they, they kind of make it a part horror film. Because the Terminator, in a sense, like, it can be interpreted as, like, some kind of flasher film, as a killer always trying to follow the main, the main character in order to kill her, in a sense. Sort of. Like, I'm not saying... Like, I'm not saying it's a horror movie based on, like, oh my god, it's scary and stuff like that, but more, like, kind of that level of trope where, like, his goal is to go out and try to kill kill the main character while on the side he would just kill anyone that's it, it in his way. It has a similar narrative structure to, like, your yeah. Halloween. There you go, thank your you. Your Jasons. Your Jasons. J Jason. And also, 13th. like, there's also that fact, and also, like, to add into that factor, it's pretty much this unkillable monster, in a sense, because, like, since it's completely a machine, uh, you can't just kill it with bullets and stuff like that, so, like, you get that sense of, like, he is unstoppable. Terminator uh, personified the evil robot in a very real and very intimidating way. Mm -hmm. where it, like, took advantage of the whole being really superior to humans thing and that it was, like, literally unstoppable and totally emotionless. And, like, it wasn't just a computer nope. with a computer voice. And plus the you fact know? that, like, it pretty much disguised... Like, the most important factor is how it disguised itself as a human. So, as a, a, in first at first glance, like, you would not notice him at all. Even That's though you totally would, because it's Arnold freaking Schwarzenegger. But <laughs> that's fine. They fix that in the sequel. It's cool. Well, I mean, like, in the immediate first glance. Like, okay. you, like if you're just pat walking by, then you wouldn't, you wouldn't notice. I don't know. I mean, like, this big hulking guy, like, walking briskly in a leather jacket with sunglasses and a totally well, stone face. It would draw some attention. Well, that was what... you would not draw the attention that, oh my god, it's a killer robot. Oh no, nobody's going to look at any person on the street, even, no matter how yes. strange they look, and go, oh, obviously he's a robot from the future. Exactly. But I'm just saying, he's not, he's not inconspicuous, which is one of my main problems with the first movie. He's really not inconspicuous at all. And it's a wonder he doesn't get the police after him, like, right away. Can I just say, if it, uh, I just want to say, if it works for Clark Kent, then it'll work for the Terminator. It's a totally different concept. He doesn't have a secret identity, and he's not disguising himself, per se. Well, I mean, you got this big, this big, hunky, like, dude, and, like, all he does is wear glasses in order to disguise himself. Like, nobody judges. Nobody asks questions. And, like, same thing with the Terminator. Like, you got this big, bulky guy, and nobody asks questions. Says so the guy with the inconspicuous glasses. <laughs> Full fucking huh? circle. Oh, damn. But, but would anyone guess that it's actually Animat wearing these uh, these glasses? Um, actually, I mean, yes, they, actually, yes, they would, because who else would wear an orange fedora? Someday oh, yeah. we'll be living in a world where minions take over the earth and our only savior is Bruce Campbell, who has a chainsaw for hand. And you think about it, guys. Think about it. Have you ever seen any of the minions and Animat in a room together? Have we? Yes. Is this what you do in your spare time? 
I, I <laughs> always had a conspiracy um, about that. Uh, <laughs> Bob, 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 not now, not now, okay? Well, Bob, what are you guys saying? Bob, what would happen to Debbie? Who the heck is Bob? <laughs> yeah, who, wait, Debbie. who is Bob? <laughs> oh, well, that's the question you're asking. What happened Bob Stewart, what happened to Debbie? Wait, what happened to Debbie? Um, where's Debbie? I need to speak to that. <laughs> Debbie's, Debbie's still around somewhere. I don't know. She took a vacation. She, 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 oh, she's 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 buried in the backyard somewhere, you know. Oh, I, I don't know where the survivors are. <laughs> um. So. Oh, no, that's wrong. Okay. <laughs> Downhill. <laughs> um, I was gonna say, we found the uh, I, I buried Debbie in the backyard. Problem solved. Okay. <laughs> so I, I wanted to ask this question, and I want to see what your thoughts are. Um, how is the relationship or the romance between Sarah Connor and Kyle Reese? I love it. It's one of my favorite parts of the movie. But I'm I'm one of those person people who gets invested in romantic plots in action movies. So. You know, I, yeah. I, thought was re I was really surprised by the twist where he turned out to be the father, and I thought that was, like, this really pivotal moment of, oh, my God, they're they're going to be together, and he knew the whole time, and, like, and then they kissed and, and made out like, the cave, oh. and, like, it was raining outside, and they had sex, and it was sexy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, that's kind of, well, that's, like, the most convoluted thing in the film is, like, okay, it's Johnson's... It's allowed to be convoluted, Mike. Well, John sends Kyle Reese, one of his best friends, into the past to protect Sarah Connor, and then all of a sudden, hey, I'm fucking your mom. Here you go. I'm your father, motherfucker. Still less contrived than Valentine's Day. Yeah, I'm not gonna argue that. Oh, true. true. <laughs> the movie. True. The movie. I know Wait, that. which one? Which one? The horror film or? Oh no, that's my bloody Valentine. But, um, no, I know what but, talking about. Oh, that crappy, like, comedy rom-com. Rom like, yeah, yeah, Ashton yeah, Kutcher yeah, and, like, yeah. ten other people. Oh, good actually, God. I'm, yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm, I was kind of thinking, first time I saw Terminator, you see them having sex with each other in the bed, and it's like... It, 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 uh, it could just be movie sex, where they don't actually, you know, uh, in, inseminate, but then... Then you get to the end of the movie and you realize she's pregnant and you're like, oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What kind of movies are you watching with inseminable sex? Like, I'm not quite sure what you're <laughs> talking well, about there. Well, well, some movies people have sex and they have safe sex, but they don't show you putting, con putting condoms on, so it's just like movie sex where they... No, well, because that's not, that's not the important part. The important part is, you know, that they're, you see their silhouettes make out with each other. And you get like the well, teasing a lure of shows? possible boobs, but no actual boobs because we can't have the NC-17 rating. That's the important part. No, mm. NC-17 would be dicks. Oh. Yeah. Well, see, there you go. Uh, they would allow that's, why we can't, that's why we can't show the condoms because we can't show dicks. Yeah. Only female right. nudity is allowed. Well, Erect. Well, 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 yeah. Technically, they kind of showed Arnold's dick, but it was from a distance and it was shadowy, but like, it, you know. Only if you were scene. paying as much attention as Morgan was. It, it, <laughs> it, it, it has to be... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That opening shot where you see his ass is amazing. I'm sorry. Hey, hey be... I'm not here to oh, judge everyone. or disagree. <laughs> it looks it so is... powerful. And they had to fucking censor it in that new movie. It, it has... Jack of man ass. It's a crime. I just want to see the Arnold abs, though, personally, but I did the yes, aspect. Looks great. <laughs> just saying. Okay, so what I what I admire about this film is um, you, one thing that James Cameron has always had an eye for. Uh, he always, even with his earliest work, uh, I, dare I say it, Piranha Two. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you go back that far, uh, he has a he has a a good sense of of how whatever film he's making should look, and and how and how the uh, the effects play out, 
And I, I think it's interesting here because the visual effects, uh, there's there's something that that is done here that that I find to be intimidating, that was uh, is not entirely captured in the later films, partly because they did CGI. Um, when you see in uh, in the Terminator, when you when you see practical effects being used in stop motion, um, it actually it actually adds a little bit to the tension because the because the robotic movement of the of uh, of stop motion sort of aids to, aids to the aesthetics of it all. I think. It does. It does. Um, the only thing that kind of throws me off is it's nineteen eighty four, and then it, the effect where he's looking in the mirror, he's taking the eye out, and that kind of looks kind of kind of dated, but it just it's effective still. Honestly, part of me is glad it looks so dated because it's so gory, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's like at least I have yeah. the comforting notion that this is obviously fake, you know. Unlike certain like I've seen vintage effects that look gorier than that, and I still can't watch them. God, that one. No, never mind. Never mind. What? No. How is Poltergeist vintage? What is your what? definition of vintage? Uh oh. Well, okay. Never mind. Uh, the Castle of Cagliostro. No. Damn it. No. That's. Whoops. Why am I forgetting? Never that? mind. It, does, it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> doesn't <laughs> matter, Matt. My Fantasia. brain got arrow 404. I was gonna say your. Those goggles are hurting your brain. Take them off. Yeah, yeah, you're... <laughs> I was, oh, God, I was thinking of the Castle me. of Caligari, I'm sorry. I was like, wait, what movie? Cagliostro? Uh, it, gotcha. You mean the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Yes, that one. Oh my... That is, <laughs> Matt is full of failure today. I'm not full of failure, what are you talking about? Well, let's it's just move like... on! <laughs> it's called Trial okay. and Error. Uh, okay, oh, so oh from... My. So how... Alright, it's one of Arnold's earlier roles like how is he effective as a terminator is uh, is it a good casting his choice? utter lack of acting talent really works well in his favor in this movie in these movies and i think that's why they're probably his most successful is because you know his entire shtick is his lack of emotion nothing clean right nothing clean right he 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 like he can he's perfect at not emoting at all that, that's, that's what sells him so well. And, and the fact that he's, you know, big, tough. Mm -hmm. Like, he's pretty much the perfect role. And, like, that's how he pretty much broke through, like, how he introduced himself into Hollywood is because of, like, like, he, he's pretty much, in a sense, you could say, like, he's that, like, stereotypical, like, like big muscles doof in a way where, like, he seems like he can easily take orders while looking big and strong and intimidating and stuff but like that. But there's a sophistication to it. A bit, that, yeah. That comes with the robot status, you know? Yeah, like, he like he doesn't take command. Like, in terms of the Terminator, like, he doesn't take commands from anyone. So, like, he... On like, screen. He's just... A, yeah, but basically, like, he, he only has one thing and one thing to do, and that's just to kill Sam or Connor. Yeah, he's pretty much doing his objective. He's programmed to do one thing, and he's exact. That's exactly what he's doing. Going right after Sarah, and I think that's interesting. For me, I thought Arnold was great. So I, that was the only thing I really knew about the movies at first. I was like, oh, Arnold's in these movies. I didn't really know why for a long time, and I was like, oh, okay, now I get it. And he has memorable lines. And he Yes, the most memorable lines that still keep going to this day, such as, I'll be back. That's my favorite, I'll be back. <laughs> so, uh, my personal favorite is your clothes. I need them. Yes. <laughs> but that's your, for, like, different clothes. reasons, uh, yeah. so don't mind me. <laughs> of course, with with your crazy oh, mind. Fuck you, asshole. Oh, fuck you, asshole. That's another yeah, great so line. Fuck you, asshole. <laughs> Any other me the any other memorable? The only problem I do have with the Terminator, as good as it is, 
it's a very talkative movie, so you really have to pay attention to it. When they're setting up the mythos of the future, it's very wordy from Kyle Reese. Like, when he mentions the pain that goes through, it's almost like a Vietnam flashback. And the scenes when he, like, literally thinks back to, like, the nightmarish world of the dystopia are surprisingly well done and they do hold up. But I think the problem of this movie is not the horror tone anything, but it's very dialogue-heavy in between its action. Everything it's setting up in this universe about the future, the fact it's not set and how they're fighting for it, it's all done by dialogue and you really have to pay attention or understand everything. And as a kid, being someone who was into like a lot of visual stuff, a lot of that passed my mind. So all I understood was, guy from future saves this woman, boom, that's it. But now I'm a whole lot older, it's like, oh yeah, now this actually makes a whole lot more sense than I figured. And just so you know, I saw this when I was like six or seven. Yeah. Mm. I was gonna say for me, like just seeing this movie and not really knowing what to expect. The one thing I'm not a huge fan of is too much gore. I don't like that. It just <laughs> disgusts me. On and... you, you, you should have seen her during Jaws. It was amazing. Oh, oh yeah, my was... god! I like. <sighs> uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, See, I'm, I'm, I'm the exact opposite. I like gore, but only if it's like ridiculously over the top. You know? Like Kill Bill over the top? Like freaking uh, Rob Zombie over the top kind of thing, you know? Uh, like if it's so okay. like disturbing that it's funny. Well, I, I like okay. I like some pretty okay. sick movies. What else is ridiculously gory? Like Dawn of the Dead? Uh, oh, um, what was that? Um, Brain Dead. That, that movie that Peter Jackson did before Brain he dead. did Brain Dead. Movies. Brain Dead. Oh Brain my dead. god. Brain Dead. Brain Dead. Brain Dead. Brain dead. Brain dead. Brain dead, yeah. Yes, there you go. Yeah. And before that, that was, was gross. And before that was bad taste. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, the I one know. Where, right, right. The one with the, the aliens that look course. like uh, biscuits. The so, Evil Dead movies have a lot uh, of that going on. Yeah, a lot of gory. So, I, I wanted to bring up all also this. There's a, there was a famous case. Um, uh, during and around the time uh, the Terminator was being produced uh, there's a, a name in Hollywood his name is Harlan Ellison uh, he's a, a long time science fiction author and uh, most notably he wrote episodes of The Outer Limits and several other short stories that eventually got published but when he when uh there's there were allegations during the production of this film that uh james cameron ripped off two of his stories uh for the outer limits one was soldier and the other one was called demon with the glass hand um stories again i i I know something or other about this controversy it's been talked about it it's kind of one of those things that some people bring up, but it's kind of moot. Like the whole Lion King Kimba comparison. It's just one of those things that yeah. nobody really gives a shit, you know? Yeah. I was gonna say, you know, like. Yeah, because, like, I've been, like, by doing research on, like, all different sorts of animated films, I've come across way too many of those stories, and they all end up, like, that no one cares and stuff like that. I've seen it done to, like, cars. I've seen it done to Monsters, Inc., The Lion King, and all sorts of stuff. It's like, you know, it's it's the same story over and over again, and that crap is just getting old, and it's getting annoying. Um, Harlan Nelson, uh, uh, I I will say this, there's a documentary talking all about it that gives a, a fairly good argument. You can watch it on YouTube, but the point is, he's copyright happy. I mean, I'm looking at some of his... He, I'm looking at some of his his other records here. Apparently, he he sued people for posting four of his stories to a news group online without his consultation. So, uh, but he's actually also made he's actually also made fun of himself. He appeared as himself on an episode of The Simpsons one time, chewing somebody out for ripping him off. Well, so, uh, at least he has a sense of humor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just, some it, just uh, if you watch 
you know, if you watch the movie and you see the credit, which you can't miss early on, it says dedicated to the works of Harlan Ellison. That's the explanation behind it. So. Right. Right. Um, what was I going I guess James Cameron created like a whole subgenre of films because of Terminator, because the uh, the club you see in the film is called Tech Noir, and that spun off into the actual term of the genre being uh, techno techni technology related, you know, noir films, you know, like the subgenre of science fiction films, which I thought was kind of nice. They actually did that. Hmm. Yeah, the, I. Yeah, the scorched earth. The, uh, I, I guess you could call this the the scorched earth, the uh, subgenre of science fiction, because that's what they portray the the future as being, and, to me, they actually do kind of a nice job of it because it's very it's very minimal. And they all they always show it at night time. So there's something about. Uh, it, there's something about blue, you know, that, that is... Yeah, I think James Cameron seems like to like blue a yeah. lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one of his trademarks, is blue. Avatar. What? Um, oh, Titanic as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Abyss. That's, yeah. that's oh, yeah. guilty. Oh, yeah. What is Titanic surrounded by? Water. No kidding. Oh, hey, hey, guys. Um, Hey guys, what are the aliens in the abyss submerged in? Mmm. Water. 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 That's that's probably hinted on during his first directing job with, with Piranha 2. I guess like you know it's all water. It's like oh blue. I can incorporate blue in my <laughs> films. Say it with me, Helen Cutter. Water. Okay. I can imagine he's looking at us and going. Needs more blue. <laughs> Actually, I would love oh, to see man. that. Like, it's like, um, the, look at the job for the day. Add more blue. <laughs> <laughs> yes, special effects person over there. You add more you blue must, over there. You must have been really inspired by the movie Blue. Mm. <laughs> you know which movie I'm talking about? Yeah. I, I think I've heard of it, but, um,. Yeah, the one that's literally nothing, like, night, like uh, two hours or something like that of nothing but blue. <laughs> any any other memorable moments in the film The Terminator you want to mention? Hmm. Good question. Um, I do have one. I remember this, even though I don't like gore, I do like seeing the one scene where they cut the hand and you see the um, actual robotic. Oh, yeah. Uh, all I kept thinking is, my prosthesis is not in this movie. God. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. Oh my god. I got to. That's how I always. Every time I think a robotic hand it was. So it works. Yeah, it's. it's it, the, the effects is like mostly the, the. The main thing, like, with it. Like. You see the stop motion effects and it just makes you think. Wow, that's robotic looking. It's actually kind of clever. Mm -hmm. And of course, he was limited, and of course, if you hear, hear the commentaries we did, you'll hear all the bonus facts about it, but basically, uh, he, he had a limited budget back then, you know? He uh, couldn't do all the special effects he wanted to do. He originally wanted to do a two-termator kind of film at the beginning, but, you know, he saved that for later on for uh, the sequel. So, he was like, okay, I got what I have. I have the stop motion, I got... You know, practical effects with the Arnold head, taking the eyeball out, mm -hmm. seeing the robot eye. It creeped me out, actually, when I first saw it. I was like, holy crap, that scared the hell out of me. Just the creepiness looking in the eye. And oh, just yeah, especially with blood. the red glare. Like, that really adds into the yes. effect. Yeah, it's just yeah the... It, it's a unique design, too, for the robot in general, mm -hmm. too. It's like you don't see... A robot designed yeah, that it's, way. Yeah, it's, it's, it's literally a, a robot skeleton. Yeah, it's it's very interesting, and 
I guess, you know, James Cameron thought of that first. He was in Europe for something and didn't specify what he was doing in Europe, but he had the dream of seeing that robot, like, all the time, and he was like, you know what, I'm gonna make a movie out of it. So he worked backwards, like, oh, let's make this robot, we kind of make a story out of it, and boom, Terminator came out. Which I thought was pretty cool. James Cameron's a good director. He, uh, he has some good stories worth telling. Most of the time. But most of the time. We'll we'll talk about Avatar at a later date. <laughs> yes, yes, we will. Yes, 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 we will. We'll, we'll discuss James Cameron at the later dates. Um, then we lead into Terminator 2: Judgment Day, uh, which is like the most critically acclaimed movie in the darn franchise. Like everybody loves the film. Mm, I don't know. Um, it, it's a what do you? It, it's a it's a smidge below the first film on Rotten Tomatoes. The second movie? Oh, yeah. 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 Second movie's yeah. way better than the first one. Oh, I agree. Yeah, but people on Rotten Tomatoes are big to differ. They say, "Oh, Terminator, one hundred percent." Because Rotten Tomatoes is the be all end all. It's, is what it's, determines it's, all of what critics say, of course. We had this discussion before. We, we know about yeah, the accuracy the of sites. like websites like IMDb, Metacritic, and yeah, Tomatoes. That's why I don't even go yeah, to these websites. About... Look, man, it's it's a better exploration of Sarah Connor's character. It has a wicked cool villain in the form of the T1000. It has a better Arnold Schwarzenegger role, and it has better effects. Right, oh, right, of yes. course. Of but the course. one thing I will say, of course. Like, the biggest and ballsiest move that it has ever done as a movie is take the villain from the first one and somehow turn it into a hero. Because, like, yeah. because mm -hmm. back then, like, we all recognized the Terminator, Terminator as this big, scary thing. Like, like this is yeah. what's going to go out to kill you. But then this one came in, and now they turn him into, like, like, they turn him into a, a hero. And it's not, like, this sudden, like, normally in movies and TV shows and stuff like that, they would they would often try to save that at, at the end. It was like, the, like where the twist of the movie would be like, oh, he's actually a good guy. But no, this one just starts out. It's like, uh, like the Terminator Arnold just comes in, come with me if you want to live. And just like, boom. Now, like, he's pretty much saving uh, John and Sarah Connor. So like it was, and that's a th it was really fascinating, and like it really did the pacing very well. Like it, it, everything just works, mostly by how they showed um, the T one thousand as a much bigger and new threat. Like like where they showed how Arnold was the old model, and then we got this new one where it's pretty much liquid metal. God, mm -hmm. he's so cool. He's so cool. I love that guy so much. You guys with the knife hands and the shape shifting and like the. The, the freaking actor cop with the eyes and like the god he melts yeah. and like he comes out of the liquid and rises up just, ah, and I, I think yeah that's one additional thing I gotta say with Robert Patrick it's like that's another like upgrade when you get what you get from Arnold Schwarzenegger because like he actually does well both like new, like complete neutral and he actually does well like just being casual because like he doesn't just stay neutral all the time like Arnold. There has to be moments where he has to he has to talk casual. He has to look normal to everyone. Like that it actually like, occurs to them like conspicuous, you guys. Mm -hmm. You want to be like inconspicuous. That. Yeah, like one of the like one of the major scenes that I remember is somewhere in the beginning when um, the T one thousand came in front of uh, like he went to. Uh, uh, John's foster parents home asking about um, like where's John Connor and stuff like that like he wasn't there like I need to like I need to find information about John Connor he is in trouble give me a picture like he was just there I was like hey you know there the, you know there's a problem with John uh, you want if I have that picture you know yeah all right yeah no don't worry everything will be fine all right thanks and then like he's back to well, he's work not that like, casual but yeah yeah uh, I was gonna say he's more, um, yeah, he's more conspicuous. Yeah. Have At you least seen he... this kid? Whoa! Uh, best cameo in Wii. Yes. 
<laughs> yes, yes. Um, with Terminator 2, they came back with Avengers. They had a bigger, much huger budget, 15 times the amount compared to the first film. The special effects are totally worth it, especially with the liquid oh, Terminator. Yes. Here's something I want to. Was... Here's something I want to address. Actually, I mean, I like the liquid effects, but you have to. It unlike the unlike the stop motion of the first film, you have to look at at the liquid effects here in T2 and say, yeah, it was the early '90s because okay. it, what that's one thing. If you look back on it now and compare it to some more recent films, uh, the uh, the effects aren't quite as polished, if you know what I mean. Well, I like right. to that there was only five minutes of CGI effects in Terminator 2. Yeah. Thankfully, yeah, I... they, thankfully, they settled for prosthetics for quite a lot of it. Oh, yeah. And I just would also like to add that the CGI was done by uh, PDI, and it was one of their first movies that they'd done. And it's, it's honestly really unfortunate that early 2015, they have uh, unfortunately shut down due to the fact that for the longest time, they were with DreamWorks, and because of the because of um, like uh, never-ending flops like Mr. Peabody and Sherman and Penguins of Madagascar, unfortunately, DreamWorks had to downsize. Uh, they had to do game change, a lot of game changing, and uh, unfortunately, they do have to shut down the PDI building. Mm. Why did Peabody and Sherman flop? It was such a good movie. Yeah. But Just it was mostly Penguins it. of Madagascar that, like, was the straw that broke the camel's back. The, uh, that movie wasn't even so bad either. Like, people are so hard on the Madagascar franchise, man. Just because no, it's I, not I, as I just, much substance as, like, you know, Kung Fu Panda. I, I like the Madagascar movie. I, I'll admit, I, I, I am a fan of the Madagascar movies, but Penguins was the weakest, to be honest. I loved, I loved the running gag where they, like, said celebrities, you know, like, Nicholas, cage them. Yeah, but you that's know? the reason why it flopped. <laughs> that was like the best running gag of the movie. Oh, what were other ones? Uh, penguins. Penguins. Anyways, was anyways, 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 anyways. Uh. Here's the thing I was thinking about. It's like, okay, John Connor sends this T-800 has been reprogrammed to be nice, and I, I, I always thought that it was like, okay. Sure, Kyle Reese died in the first movie, but I would think that they could somehow do a loophole kind of thing, bring Kyle Reese back to protect Sarah Connor and Jer John Connor. But I always thought John Kyle Reese was an interesting character in general. Like he was in the first film, he was you know a good protector. He had all this information. He had flashbacks of the future war. You know, he was something you know you can kind of like oh he's some of the roof for. And I kind of missed that in Terminator 2, but I guess, you know, Arnold is Arnold, because Arnold's always a badass in the film. Well, well they did have a cameo. Well, they did have a cameo with, um, Cal Reese's character, but that got cut or stored for the, uh, extended version. That, yeah, that was like, uh, like a dream hallucination kind of thing, and I was just like, okay, Sarah, you're going cuckoo, because you're in the kooky place for the asylum because people thought you were crazy well, i want to argue this i sort of i mean i liked kyle reese as a character but i liked that even though he wasn't in terminator 2 it built on sarah's character she was actually able she had to deal with the fact that she lost him he was dead she was in an asylum and her son is in a foster home um and she's dealing with this terminator future that she's trying to control that she really can't control and it's a huge nice. step up. <clears throat> Sorry. Go ahead. And it's a huge step up from the first film because she's so innocent and damsel in distress like in the first film, right. minus mm. the climax where she crushes the Terminator. In the second one, she is expecting the worst, she's building up for it, she's really has to protect her son, but at the same time gain her trust with this thing that tried to kill her before, so there's a lot of new stuff building on Sarah, Sarah Connor's character, which makes it a little more intriguing. Yes. Because yeah. there's ten years of, like, in between the first two mm -hmm. films. Like, a year after the film, you know, timeline-wise, John Connor was born. And then, you know, the build-up to the second film, you know, she learned as a character, she, like, 
and taught John whatever before be, before uh, being in foster care, and of course her going into the uh, asylum, which I would I like to see like the in between movie in between one and two. I like to see what happened in those ten years from eighty four to ninety four. Yep. Which... Okay, that's true. I think yeah, that's why I kind of liked this movie better was because it did build on Sarah's character, and mm -hmm. I also liked how. Yeah, she did have to learn how to trust the Terminator, even though he was technically trying to kill her in the first movie. And then right. he programmed to be nice, and then she had to learn that, yeah, he was being nice, and he's going to be able to take care of John, technically. And I just thought it worked so well. It was kind of a, um, it was like good chemistry with all of them, and then she was just learning how to be badass and independent. Mm -hmm. uh, that's I always love independent, independent badass females. So that was a huge step up for me. I thought that was a little bit of a curious question, but um, what what would you guys prefer, the longer version or the theatrical cut? And when I mean the longer version, I'm not talking about the one with the super mega fun happy ending. Hmm, I I don't that's ever a saw tough the one call. Version. That's a, a really tough Cause, call. Because with the extended version, they added a whole lot of good scenes, like that three-minute scene that Arnold thought for, where they removed the chip of the Terminator to try and reset his read-only function, and you have like, that little tussle between the John and Sarah, the fact that, you know, she's trying to destroy this thing for the good, and he's all like, no, no, we can, he can help us out, you know, we don't know anything about the future and stuff, and he, you know, learns that he's going to be a good leader, or he might as well at least propose ideas and stuff like that, and that was his big turnaround with the character, and it took them a long time to shoot that sequence, even had, like, uh, Linda Hamilton's twin for that bit. Mm-hmm. Right, oh, see, most director cuts do improve on the film beyond the theatrical cut. Like, with, for me, like I said, without the super mega happy alternate it's... ending, it the added scenes actually builds it more. I personally think. Trust me, trust me, the regular extended version does not have that ending or the other extra scene in there that was an Easter egg for the Ultimate Edition DVD and the Skynet Edition on Blu-ray. I was going to say, the only mm -hmm. version I did see was the one I watched with you guys, but I definitely need to check out the theatrical cut. Because I did love this movie. <laughs> so I wanna, I'm curious I'm to see sure. I'm pretty sure it was the original cut that I saw, because I certainly don't remember any scene with Kyle Reese. Yeah, you saw it the theatrical the cut. Because yeah. uh... yeah. even, the, even the climax had the T-1000 glitching and stuff, which was really cool. So weird, because I usually see the extended versions of things first, like if they're older movies, because that's just how it happens. I'm used to seeing the extended version of Lord of the Rings, saw the extended Highlander, Robocop. Not I Terminator 2, apparently. What was that? Oh. I buy that for a dollar. Mention Robocop, <laughs> silly me. It's it's a shame too because there's one scene that's sadly referenced in the new sequel, which is not in the theatrical version of T2, which is weird because they reference it. They have John Carter yep. trying to teach the Terminator to smile more, and he studies this really geeky smile. He does it very very poorly. <laughs> was that yeah. in the original version? No, no, that's that scene was, I do no. remember. No, that was the theatr that was the extended version. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. Extended. yes. Okay, yes, because I I'm really saw... confused. Because I did see the theatrical cut before watching this extended cut back to back, and I How just saw How did I see one scene in the extended version and not another? Maybe you're hazily remembering the film and you don't know which version you saw. You would have to check both versions out and see them. Yeah, you gotta compare the both and see which one, yeah. Should we like... mention the Jada, the happy ending that she never saw? I definitely never saw a happy ending. Yeah, so explain the, the happy... alternate ending for the audience who does not know what happened in, in the extended oh, cut. Oh boy, so keep in, mind, this, keep in mind, this is the special extended version which can be unlocked as an easter egg. Keep that in mind. So, you can also see the alternate ending as a bonus feature, blah blah. 
So, um, right. yes, this ending happens right after the Terminator goes into the vat of molten lava. We cut to years later in the future, where we cut to, like, a little playground where it's, like, happy and stuff as it bookends the earlier playground in the future that's on fire and stuff. And we see Sarah as this really old woman on a bench talking into, like, a little tape recorder about how the future never happened and stuff and how the memory could have been in there and we cut to Kyle Reese on the swing set with like her daughter with his daughter or something and helping her out and it was supposed to sort of be like this little nice little coda but then James Cameron realized it'd be a whole lot better if the idea that if he could change the future it would be a little more better if the whole ending was ambiguous as to whether Judgment Day was averted or not, so... Yeah, and, and doesn't she get cancer anyway? Yes, in the third film. That that was established in the second movie, though, wasn't it? That she was going to die? Mm, I don't remember that part, to be honest. No, I don't think it was. Oh. Okay, so the third movie pulled that out of their ass. Yep. Yes. Cause well, there's we... a good reason for that, actually, but we'll get to that when we get to the third film. Um... Sorry, no, wait, it, it, was mentioned, it was mentioned in the Sarah Connor Chronicles. That's what I'm thinking of. They, oh, okay. they tried to, like, tie that together. There you go. They tried. They tried. They tried. Oh, okay. A for effort. Okay. So, yeah, but the, the alternate ending and the ambiguous ending, they, they, um... They're a very interesting. Uh, they're why that this the second film is kind of an interesting ordeal altogether, and this is a this is setting up something that eventually, as a series, as a whole, is uh, is a theme that I find to be they've been they've been quite rocky with uh, the the. The stated theme that there is that there is no fate but what we make for ourselves. Whether or not you can possibly change the future, you know this is not the last time that they that they try that in the series. This is only the first time. And to me, I always felt like the ending to Terminator 2, not the super happy fun ending, but the semi ambiguous ending where judgment they may or may not have happened, was. It, it was kind of odd because it's to me it's kind of saying okay if they if they cancel judgment day there would be no reason there would be no war in the future and there would be no reason for the robots to come back and and start all this shit to begin with paradoxical mm -hmm. yeah it's very and, paradoxical yeah and another thing that i just realized that about the like super happy ending is that it would make absolutely no sense to have it and it would just it would just feel like something they just pulled out out of their butts because like when you really do think about it like it's extremely out of place because when did it ever like when was it ever all sunshine and rainbows in a terminator movie like ever well you know i mean they they set up some possibility for there to eventually be a happy ending i mean it's hard to that, get invested that's the thing. when there's not that's the thing like they they like they would only mention it they only mention a possibility but is there ever that was you know that was like sunshine and rainbows and happiness no well, never. okay there's just i don't think it's necessarily sunshine and rainbows just to show like a happy ending at this point there had only been like the two movies so we were comparing one movie to another one and just because one movie sets up for a sequel as opposed to having a happy ending doesn't mean the other movie has to do the same well, mm -hmm. it would still be a bit, like, you know, like, it, like, would it all lead, like, would it be worth it that it would all lead up to that? To the world getting saved? Yeah, I'd say that's pretty fucking worth it. I think that's our I goal would, in the first place. I would agree with that, actually. Because even though it seems kind of weird, I thought it seemed like a good ending to me. I, I liked the ending, and I, I would have mm. been perfectly happy with that ending. It... And here's the thing, that these two films by James Cameron are a perfect back-to-back -back thing. They're, it's a completed storyline. It's just like, it's done. 
over. No need to actually have a sequel or anything like that. It's oh, perfect the way it there is. is. Honestly, most people don't it's... feel the need to watch the other movies, or if they do, they wish they no. didn't. Yeah. Like, exactly. So, you like, might just... as well end it there. <laughs> like, what do we I have to want... gain otherwise? Like, I, I will admit that, like, for me at least, I prefer the, um, the ambiguous ending because, like, it leaves much more of an impact about the Terminator franchise and it makes you think more about it, you know? Like, it leaves... It leaves a longer lasting, you know, other is than it... like, oh, okay, it's done. Okay, we don't have to worry about that anymore. It's, it's like to set, this... set up that sequel date. No, it's, it's not. It's not to set up a sequel. It's to make you, like, I'm not saying that like as the purpose to to set up for another Terminator movie or something like that. It just leaves you thinking, like, you know, it makes you think more about the Terminator. I just don't know if a happy ending is necessarily a, a, a closed, slammed door in the face of thought and interpretation. You know, like how many heavily analyzed movies had happy endings? Well, I was gonna say for like for me, I remember watching the ending going, "They worked so hard to get to this ending." Like, think about it. Yeah, they so have it was to earned. do. All. Yeah, they had to go through, like, yeah, she had to go through all this crap, and then all of a sudden she realizes that this happy ending came, and she's still unsure about it. Like, yeah, I sort of like that, though. I liked the happy ending, even though she herself didn't seem, like, all that satisfied with the happy ending. <laughs> I thought it worked, but maybe that's just... It just, looked, it just looked weird to me, because it was... Linda Hamilton dressed up in old person makeup with gray hair, and they, they have a grand. Uh, John has a grand daughter or a grand granddaughter, granddaughter, I believe. Granddaughter. Yeah, and and of course it's revealed that John Connor is now a senator in this you know changed future. I'm like, how the? God what? only knows how that happened. That I, I don't even. How did it? Say. How did he become a senator? How did he become He's a senator? Same way like, that Arnold became a, senator? a governor. The nuclear if he... games were gonna take place in LA. Well, in one future he would have been a leader, in another future he would have been a leader. Uh, he's a. Mm -hmm. that's, so that's what. Well. Okay, but he became a leader hopefully... of the revolution because of what he knew. You become a senator ideally because you finish your education, for one. And he like, the John Connor as a kid was clearly not attending elementary school. Exactly, he was skipping out on school to go to the arcade. I mean, he was already like 13. Yeah, that, that's true. Not all well, senators are leaders. Real... <laughs> well, well, if you want to split it... hairs about it. It's weird because Edward Furlong it was 13 when he played John Connor. He was supposed to be 10 years what? old. Okay, he didn't act like a 10 year old. He acted like a no, Bradley cause... Simpson, is what he acted like. like you know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Sure. Um, because, like I said before, it takes 10 years after the first film. So 84 to 94, it makes sense to be like, oh. He just has way too much of the emo teenager on him for me to really buy that. Exactly. And pe and that can gets people confused about it, which we'll kind of get mm. talk about later on. But let's uh, talk about a little side thing about the franchise that lead on to uh, T2, which was uh, T2 3D The Ride. Yes, um, I'll take care of this one, Mike. Uh, now, here's the thing about Terminator 2 3D. Uh, originally, Universal wanted to have this, uh, just a stunt show, just a regular stunt show. But for James Cameron, he really wanted to do much more. And this really is much more. Not only is this a live stunt show, but this is also a 3D show. It's pretty much a combination into one to, make, to get this experience that you cannot get anywhere else. So basically, what is Terminator 2 3D? It's not really like a gimmick thing. It's not just a ride, but it's also kind of an expansion to the world of Terminator. Where basically, guests go into Cyberdyne, and they're given this little tour. But at the same time, uh, Sarah and John Connor, uh, they pretty much hacked into the system to warn about people about, you know, like, what's going to happen, the, the great war that's going to happen. And basically, like... You pretty much get this presentation, and also you get to see Terminators that you have never seen before. Uh, one of which being what used to be the earliest form of a Terminator, which was the T-70. And it's basically 
Like, it looked much more robotic than it did, like, human or skeleton or anything like that. And what happens afterwards is that, um, like, John, John and Sarah Connor would come out, and also, here comes the Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and they were, pre- and they were pretty much being chased by the T-1000. Like, he, he's there, too. That's pretty much why this is Terminator 2 3D, because all the characters from Terminator 2 are there. And um, one of the interesting factors is that as a stunt show, like, normally you would get actors, you would hire, like, whoever you can, but in the 3D show, they got all the original actors there. They got Linda Hamilton, they got uh, Eddie... Eddie... Ed, Edward, Furlong. Edward Furlong. Furlong. They got Arnold Schwarzenegger, they got Robert Patrick, they, like, they got the original cast. And uh-huh. um, basically, you, like, what happens is that they get to go in the war in the war time and like they got to go fight off not only the uh the t-1000 but they also have to fight off new terminators uh one of which also being the um like mini hunters which they're pretty much like these small helicopters and once they get into uh skynet uh they want to go and try to destroy the cpu which is guarded by the latest and biggest terminator model ever created which is the t1 million which is basically the same form. It's made of the same thing as the T-1000, as liquid metal, but he doesn't turn into, like, he doesn't morph. All he does is that he tur- he's pretty much in the form of this giant spider. And that's basically what this whole show is, and it's, it's rather incredible. Like I said, it's an experience unlike any other with the way that it combines uh, li- like a live stunt show uh, using, like, where they got like motorcycles and chase scenes and like gunfights and all that stuff with a 3D show like to pretty much enhance it. Honestly, I feel like this is the second best 3D 3D show you can ever find. The first of course being the Vision 3D, nothing can beat that. Um, but it's just um, Morgan, uh, thankfully he gave me this really interesting documentary how James Cameron like he was looking into perfection onto this like they had to spend three weeks just to do uh night shootings in uh in a desert for the 3d segments and also like they really had to like pretty much time everything in order for the live actors to um like to interact with what's going on in the 3d screen so like like oh like uh john and sarah connor they're walking they're running this way and it takes this much time so like they always have to enhance like what like how the characters are going to interact with whatever's on screen and like this is mostly for the cgi for the like mostly the cgi stuff they can't do it with the live actors well technically they can but uh, anyways 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 uh, and it really is fascinating and it really is also very immersive how you're entering into skynet into and and stuff like that it's just it, it's just really fascinating now i will say that as of right now the only places where you can find it is just in universal studios japan and in universal studios florida it was in universal studios hollywood but unfortunately it was taken down in order to be replaced with banana oh yes yeah, so it, yep, it was actually re- uh, wait it was actually ten- replaced what wait Wait 10 years and they'll replace it with Shrek 4D, and then wait another 15 years and they'll get Captain EO2, the search for more MJ money. Oh, that's a Disney thing. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. That's okay, Disney well, thing. Maybe they'll I replace think... it with a How to Train Your Dragon Ride. But anyways, no, that's pretty much Terminator 2 3D, and it's definitely the best thing, possibly the best thing that ever came out after uh, Terminator 2. I'll say, actually, um, one more thing. I just want to mention that uh, when I was there, there is one criticism that I do have. It holy crap, is it freaking loud? Like the gunshots, they sound, they legit sound like real gunshots, and they hurt your ears. We're no, we're no kidding. It's gonna be real, not the synthetic crap. Uh, well, of course it's not synthetic, but jeez, it's like, ow. You want to make like a like a pew 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 pew. pew you do want to add to the experience when you're making like a 3D show as opposed to just like a movie. Not that I would know, because I've never been to friggin' Universal Studios. Although one time, at Canada's Wonderland, they had a Spongebob Squarepants 3D showing. 
the 3D yeah. ride? I know which one you're talking about. They had that in uh, Montreal at one point. It's the one where they have to, where SpongeBob has to get the pickle, wasn't it? Yeah, and Pat, there's a robot Patrick. Yes, that I make. And it has like Isn't all these tools. There's like a big yeah, buzz saw on it, of yeah. course, like dips in the camera. It's 4D. Cause that, that's, there's a Robert. They, they had a there's a Robert Patrick in the SpongeBob show. What? No, 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 no. Robo <laughs> Patrick, not a Robo Robert Patrick. Patrick. Oh, a Terminator Robo Patrick. Patrick to like steal the Krabby Patty formula or whatever his motivation always is. The T Patrick. Oh my god, it sounds like... Uh, so... I hate this channel! <laughs> <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't honestly the best quality. I'm going to give Universal Studios the benefit of the doubt and assume they have a higher budget. Oh no, than... no. This had a $24 million budget. Like, this looks legit. Yeah, Spongebob did not. No. The Spongebob ride was, was like... not $24 million. I can tell you that yeah, right T... now. Yeah, T2 3D was like the biggest, like, most expensive, like produced ride, I I've think, I've seen some of the 3D the shows, time. like, on YouTube and stuff. Like, I saw the Transformers um, one that was made for the Transformers movie. And I have to say, story-wise, it was a lot better than the Transformers movie. Actually, Not that that's hard on... to accomplish. Uh, let me check on that. It could be possible that... Um, I think wait, Captain wait, wait, wait. was what... still the most expensive. What about that 3D King Kong ride? Is that still functional? No, 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 it's still on. That, that's new, though. God. Hmm. 